Maria Montessori, Her Life and Work, by E.M. Standing. Part 1, Chapter 1, and What You're Getting, Section 4, A Prophetic Incident. We are not surprised to learn that, under the oppressive burden of these and still other difficulties, the spirit of the young pioneer came almost to a breaking point. One day, overwhelmed by a feeling of despair, the young girl student determined to abandon the unequal struggle against the sea of troubles. She therefore left the dissecting room with her mind quite made up to seek another career less strewn with obstacles. It happened that her way home led through the Pincio Park which at that hour was almost empty of people. As she walked along, thinking of her decision, she passed a shabbily dressed woman accompanied by a child of some two years of age. The woman was disheveled and dirty, a professional beggar, and began at once to beg for alms as Montessori approached. It was not the woman, however, but the child who was destined to alter the course of her life. Whilst the mother tuned up her professional wine, the little child, quite unconcerned, continued to sit on the ground playing with a small piece of colored paper. There was something in the child's expression, so serenely happy in the possession of that there was something in the child's expression, so serenely happy in the possession of that worthless scrap of colored paper, observing it with the full absorption of its little soul, that suddenly, to the student watching, it brought an inner experience best described in the words of Matthew Arnold's buried life, it was as though a bolt was shot back somewhere in the breast, and a lost pulse of feeling stirred again. Moved by emotion she could not herself explain, she turned round and went straight back to the dissecting room. From that moment her revulsion to the work in those uncongenial surroundings left her, never to return. From that moment, too, she never doubted that she had a vocation. After relating this incident in a conversation, Montessori went on to say, "'I cannot explain it.' It just happened like that. You will probably think it a very silly story, and if you told it to others, they would probably just laugh at it. In this we see an example of that mysterious affinity which exists deep in the soul of the genius, toward that work which he is destined to perform, and everything connected with it. It was the same with Froebel, as we shall show in a later chapter. Both he and Montessori were sent into the world to shed new light on the unfathomed depths of the child's soul. At that time, and for many years to come, Montessori had no idea that she would find her life's mission in the sphere of education. Her life, taken as a whole, demonstrates the principle she was to preach in later years, that the preparations of life are indirect. When she was taken ill about this time and her friends were anxious about her recovery, she said, Do not be alarmed. I shall not die. I have a work to do. Ho de fare. Reader's Notes the talk of that expression on a child, so serenely happy and observing with full absorption of its little soul. When I learned some of Montessori under my mother, I remember seeing that in children. It's possibly the most beautiful look on the planet. Like, I now try to see it in everyone, adults, animals, everywhere I can bring that out in someone. I want to see that look on their face.